Since World War II, the aircraft carrier has been the United States' most decisive instrument of power projection. Carriers shape global policy through presence, reach, and sustained offensive capability. When a carrier strike group enters a region, it alters calculations, military, diplomatic, and strategic. Each carrier fields a combat air wing capable of executing deep strike, air superiority, electronic warfare, and surveillance missions. F-18 Super Hornets, EA-18G Growlers, E-2 Hawkeyes, and F-35s form a layered, multi-role force designed to operate independently or in support of joint operations. Carrier flight operations are the mechanism by which sustained combat pressure is applied. Sorties are launched to achieve tactical outcomes, suppression of enemy air defenses, maritime interdiction, strategic targeting. The tempo is maintained to deny adversary maneuver, control escalation, and shape the battle space hour by hour. This is deliberate, persistent combat power. Every U.S. Navy supercarrier is nuclear-powered. That propulsion isn't about endurance, it's about permanence. With unlimited range and no refueling constraints, the carrier can remain on station for months, sustaining operations without logistical interruption. This autonomy gives commanders strategic leverage, the ability to apply pressure, hold targets at risk, and respond to crises without delay or dependency. But the carrier never deploys alone. Each one sails at the center of a carrier strike group, a layered combat formation built for offense, defense, and survivability. A typical strike group includes the carrier itself, at least one guided missile cruiser for air defense coordination, two to three Arleigh Burke-class destroyers for multi-role protection, and a fast attack nuclear submarine tasked with undersea dominance, and ISR. Additional support ships provide logistics, fuel, and ammunition, extending the group's operational reach. This isn't a convoy. It's a mobile war fighting. Every vessel has a defined role. Every movement is coordinated. Together they form a maritime combat system capable of launching strikes, defending against saturation attacks, and maintaining sea control across thousands of miles. The carrier is the nucleus, but the strike group is the weapon. Forward deployed, the strike group is not a signal. It's a fully integrated combat solution capable of executing joint force objectives across air, sea, and subsurface domains. U.S. Navy supercarriers are the largest warships ever constructed. Each one spans over 1,090 feet in length, longer than three football fields, and displaces more than 100,000 tons. The flight deck alone covers nearly five acres, supporting simultaneous launch and recovery operations across multiple aircraft types. Below deck, the ship houses command centers, weapons magazines, maintenance bays, and living quarters for over 5,000 personnel. This is not a vessel. It's a floating military base. The cost reflects the scale. A single Nimitz-class carrier exceeds eight billion in construction, not including the strike group or air wing. The newer Ford-class carriers push that figure past $13 billion incorporating advanced launch systems, reduced crew requirements, and expanded sortie capacity. But cost is not the metric that matters. What matters is strategic effect. A deployed carrier can deliver hundreds of strike sorties per day, maintain persistent ISR coverage, and enforce air superiority across entire regions. Its presence alone can deter aggression, shape diplomacy, and anchor joint force operations. No other platform offers this combination of reach, endurance, and scalable combat power. And no adversary can match it in open waters. The carrier's size isn't access, it's capacity. 
capacity to project, to sustain, and to dominate. The Nimitz-class carriers have defined American naval power for nearly half a century, but their era is ending. The future belongs to the Ford-class, larger, more efficient, and built for sustained operations in contested environments. With electromagnetic launch systems, reduced crew requirements, and expanded sortie capacity, the Ford class is engineered for high-tempo warfare. Its design reflects a shift in doctrine, from regional dominance to global readiness against peer adversaries. That shift is most visible in the Pacific. As China expands its naval footprint and missile reach, carrier operations in the Indo-Pacific have become more complex and more critical. Forward presence is no longer just deterrence, it's strategic positioning. The Ford class is built to operate under threat, survivable, scalable, and integrated with joint force assets across air, sea, and cyber domains. It's not a replacement, it's a recalibration. And as the Nimitz class retires, the Ford class will carry forward the doctrine of power projection, refined for a new era, but rooted in the same principle. Deliver combat power anywhere it's needed, without delay. The Ford-class carrier is not an upgrade. It's a redesign for a new threat environment. Built for contested zones, it integrates electromagnetic launch systems, advanced radar, and reduced crew requirements to support high-tempo operations under saturation attack. Its architecture reflects a shift in doctrine, survivability, scalability, and integration with unmanned systems and joint force assets. That shift is most visible in the Pacific. China's expanding naval footprint, long-range missile systems, and artificial island bases have redefined the operating environment. Carrier operations in the Indo-Pacific now demand hardened platforms, persistent ISR, and the ability to operate inside denied zones. The Ford class is built for that reality capable of executing strike, surveillance, and air dominance missions without relying on forward basing. It's not just a symbol of presence, it's a platform engineered for strategic competition. As the U.S. pivots toward the Pacific, the carrier remains central to escalation control, deterrence, and maritime dominance. The doctrine endures, project power, shape outcomes remain forward, but the tools have evolved. And in the next decade, the Ford class will define how the U.S. Navy fights, signals, and prevails.